So this is what we are creating today. going for 170 bpm that's that's the speed for drum bass usually i mean you could go to 172 um, i'm just creating in my loop it works so far um, and then i'm using a grid patch i made which is called drum and bass drums it looks like this and i make this available on my uh, patreon but you don't really need to recreate it. You can just do some kind of random drum bass loop wave file if you want to. This is how it sounds. So this, this is basically the kick drum. Um, this is the snare. Um, this is the hi-hat. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of a drum bass loop here. And when I hit stop on the transport, you can see here it switches off basically the audio because it is a self-running patch. Um, you can also change here the pattern of the kicks and the snares if you want to. Something like this if you want to. Um, maybe it's also important to use a note out for later. Uh, because we want to duck the bass to the kick drum. So I'm using here the, um, let me see, this is the trigger. And maybe we just trigger this on, I don't know, uh, C1. Yeah, so we trigger the note C1 here every time the kick drum comes in. You can see here, we have already a note out. And we can use this later on then for the, uh, for the ducking of the bass. And speaking of the bass, of course, we create the bass next up. And I'm going for phase four. Um, I could use here whatever I want to use, maybe a serum. Uh, but I feel like every everyone uses serum in the jump bass scene, um, uses the same kind of tricks and stuff. So I, I always tend to go to different synthesizers just to sound a bit different, have different uh, bass sounds. Um, so yeah. So you can use the serum if you want to, but you can also just use your phase four um, and just delete here the default modulators. Um, then I'm using here a clip for the bass. And maybe make this a bit shorter here, just for the beginning. So in here I'm going for E. Just I told you in my last one of my last videos or recent videos, um, you can utilize here the white notes if you start on E and use all the white keys or all the white notes from beginning from E, you're basically in the scale of E Phrygian. It's not C major, it's E Phrygian because you start on E. So then in here you can utilize um, the F, which is a half tone step, and these two, which are half tone steps, so it makes a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice scale basically for this kind of um, darker uh, bass lines or bass sounds or bass patterns. So let's create here just one note on here. Yeah, that's okay. And maybe we just concentrate here on the bass alone. So we use maybe a sign for the operator one. No modulation here applied. And then we maybe go here to ratio one one and choose 
a different uh, format. It's called format here, but it's usually just an, um, how should I describe it? It's just an kind of an, where's the format here? Format, yeah. Harmonic inserted as additional sign cycles within the wave shape. So you create basically, um, yeah, octaves here. There you go to four or three, something like this. And I'm going for modulating it, um, yeah, the modulation amount in the in the ranger itself. And I don't use the segments because I just find this much faster. And I can exactly, absolutely paint in where this modulation should be applied to in terms of the grid. So something like this. Uh, maybe we use to also stain all the way up, no release, or just a tad of release. Select a device, the device is still monophonic. Uh, we apply some drive. That's okay. Then in the FX box here, I want to split the signal into two bands with the FX2. So low bands and high bands. In the high band, I probably want to add some kind of reverb. Uh, maybe I use a convolution here. Right, something like this. Maybe I'll use, use, use an EQ2 just to make the cut a bit bigger, to bring in a notch basically into um, the waveform, into the sound here, into the bass sound. Maybe distortion to get more overtones. Okay, so maybe go here one octave lower. That's that's better. So in here we use instead of only this here, we also maybe change the shape. So we can start here high then slowly go down. Uh, so let's um, scale this up. And then use this here at the end. much. So in here we maybe can insert some kind of um, bend on the note. Maybe two semitones. Just make it interesting enough. This is too much. So then we duplicate this here to a second. 
uh, second clip. And in this clip, we change some small things, not too much. So we have here one operator left or two operators left so we can play around with these. This is here ratio 6-1. Maybe you can play this with an LFO. Use a classic one here. Uh, maybe dot it. Then we trigger with the with the note, and then bring in here the purple one. I think it's better to just paint it in. Um, so we have more control all right and then we just uh, select this here duplicate it So in here we maybe add another note. Get me out of this mode here. One octave higher. can see we can create some nice uh, movements just by modulating stuff here adding a bit of fx and um, yeah basically three notes just this and these two so and um, what we also can do is we can bring in here maybe an EQ5 and just notch some frequencies over time. So maybe I'll just record this. Something like this. Uh, let's see a different. sure we hit here the ceiling of 0 dB. Go to minus 3 dB. And I can also add here the tool device. 
uh, with the node side chain. And now we can basically grab the kick drum output here from the from the drum grid. Right. You can see the trigger with the kick drum. This modulator. And then we duck here the bass. If you don't like how the bass line sits with the drums, you can always go for delay one. I do this all the time. And delay one is basically on a specific configuration, default configuration. So the filter is all the way down here. So there's no real low cut. I mean, it's cutting at 20 Hertz, but yeah, you want to do this anyway, probably. And then it cuts here at 20 K and there's no feedback. The mix is all the way up, so we basically just offset the, the, the pattern coming, coming in here, right, the bass. By two 16 notes. So the bass is always two 16 notes later than the kick. I don't really like how yeah this one sits uh, with the kick. Maybe I need to tweak this a bit. Let's try it here, super simple. Let's try and modify here at the end for these two. The um, EQ a bit better or different. Let's pull. Okay, let's add some some synth, poly synth, and we gonna create here just one note clip. Inside this note clip, I'm using E, probably, without the note expressions here with the micro micro pitch expressions. And maybe start here. Um, then I'm going for band pass and lots of unison. And this is gonna be also a modulation thing here. Just some bit of filtering. Um, on this, I want to have here maybe a super massive. I probably resample this anyway here. Um, so today it's gonna be some kind of yeah project where I don't use Bitwig in its purest form. It's more like how I made drum bass ten years ago or so. Um, so 
so let's modulate here the mix maybe. And then the delay. <laughs> oh, clear this up. Clear. And I put here a peak limiter in there. Just to uh, scratch the surface here at the threshold. I probably also want to have a low cut here because I don't need all that stuff down here. And I just bounce this here. Post fader, 32 bit floating point, no dither. Bounce, mute. Let's see if I put when I put this here, I'll just reverse this. And it's a bit, a bit quieter. Alright, so this is maybe a sound, and here I go back to the first sound. And I use a different delay setting. Maybe not that much feedback. Maybe this, this mode. No delay mix time here. Oh. Yeah, let's let's bounce this. Put this here, mute this. And then maybe we can play around here with the wave file. Um. Oh, it's actually no. Oh, yeah, I rebounce this. Let's cut this here. Reverse only this, fade in, and maybe uh, one octave lower. Maybe this also an octave lower. Consolidate. Okay, so maybe we can bring in another poly synth here. And on this one, I also use the E. This one, get this kind of sound. Right to get the uh, kind of some kind of uh, co uh, dub chord type of sound. Maybe a different diffusion algorithm here. So I bounce this also. Put this over here. So we make a collection of kind of synth sounds. 
Um, different setting here. So I bounce this here a bit longer. So this one is then reversed. I can fade in with this. And the original synths here you can just delete. You probably don't need it's just you know to have some source sounds <clears throat> and then we bounce out some some stems and yeah reuse them kind of different ways so i also pitch this down here to uh, one octave and then it probably needs here some kind of low cut because we pitch this down And this is kind of how we fill up the, the frequency spectrum with different stuff. Um, I can also use some percussions here. So it's basically a preset, a default preset for the XO here yeah, for having everything filled up with percussion sounds. And then I can use here the internal sequencer. Um, replace the samples. Oh, it's the wrong, it's the wrong track. So the percussions itself are a bit monophonic, so we can utilize here the Haas effect. Oh, this one here. So this one basically pitches here the left channel a bit differently than the right channel. And this one here delays the right channel uh, by a few milliseconds than the left channel. That's the Haas effect, that's how it's called. So we are uh, pushing maybe frequency that's in the area of E, maybe. So let's see, this is here um, B4. So let's go for E4. Or maybe E5. I don't need to don't need to do this, but I sometimes like to do this and see if it sounds better if you push some musical important frequencies in the key. Maybe a hard clip here instead of a limiter. Maybe a super massive here. It's too much feedback. Or maybe not not too much feedback, it's maybe too much delay.
let's exchange here the samples again. can bounce this here also out to a WAV file. Then put this here. Maybe in a second um, second pattern it's you know it's a bit different. So this may be the first part here, it's eight eight bars. Then we switch to different pattern here and this pattern has um, different different percussions. <laughs> Different samples. And here we assemble this again, or this this part here. Post fader, yeah. Put this over here, we can delete this track and then just duplicate this. Mute this. Okay, so here we have basically different different percussions, so I use a different color coding for that. So we can't, yeah, so we don't exchange this accidentally. And then I'm using an XO. And I'm using some writes, maybe. Oh, I disabled this. Okay, I see. So let's put an It's a bit too quiet for some reason. Out is up, okay. Let's put here a limiter there. I think this sounds better. I want to probably have some kind of sh sh shakers or something like this. Okay, so then use here a different rights. Here we exchange this for some shakers.
Should be a bit samey. Oh yeah. Grouping here the sense so I have more control over this whole thing. Probably want to also add, add a low cut. Maybe a tool there. Or oh, I can use the tool here with the side chain on the synth. Yeah, just put this here. Yeah. can probably do a bit more with some velocity. Yeah, it's a bit more humanized. Maybe a bit of shuffle. Oh, by the way, you can also switch on your shuffle. Oh, it's on by default here um, in the drum, drum bass grid. So everything you trigger in here is also shuffled. And you use the global shuffle. So here in this phase, we use more modulation strength, 800%. So everything you modulate here is, you know, emphasized a bit more. Um, so this is here and here we basically go a bit down and then at the end we go, we go up. can see you get automatically basically an arrangement just by uh, starting with a short loop and then you add some stuff and you say okay here I'm going for shakers then I switch to the rights 
Um, here I'm changing to a different kind of percussion set and so on. So you get in all these different alternations and um, yeah, you basically move on and get here uh, a nice arrangement for, yeah, for free basically. So here we can say um, the rights or the shakers are nice, but I want to maybe have different samples. So I duplicate this here. So the pattern stays the same, but I exchange the samples. Uh, yeah. sounds nice or sounds better so yeah we have these shakers here this this shaker thing maybe you can do a bit more here with the with the synths um so here um let's see we phase this out and this and this also maybe I create some new synths poly synth so what I want to say is basically uh, the, the, the track itself or the track writes itself <laughs> delay um so I leave this here just use a uh, slight slowly decaying delay maybe seven or six So let's bounce it, let's see how this sounds. Then I reverse this, of course. And here I use it this different setting. it maybe reverse this here and fill in the blanks with a super massive and 
Yeah, I use the mix knob here. Go slowly up. And this is what I want to bounce. So I can delete the other one, reverse this again. So now it's more like, you know, coming out of the emptiness. decide which what sounds better or what sounds worse this here again delete this maybe I keep this for later here I use this reversed for some reason I use this also here and I push this down one octave <laughs> Put this here into the into the synth folder. can get out some some more out of the base here with a bit of distortion <laughs> I don't like the second or the third harmonic here of the bass. So we have a lot of stuff here we can actually use for uh, different things. So first I want to bounce here all the different shakers. 
Um, so this is this is a shaker here. I think also this one here. So you put this here on the same track. You can delete this. You can delete this. Different color. Here we have some some rides. You can also bounce. And if you ask yourself, well, maybe I want to change this later on. No, I don't want to. If I want to change some of these things, I just start a new track and make it different. So this is how I see it. <laughs> So these are the drums here. It's the bass since it's not needed. Maybe it's a bit too loud here. already running pretty nice so we can put this here on to um, the drop 65 this is 1 minute 29 uh, when you have 172 bpm that's basically uh, 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 8 or exactly 60 64 bars if I'm not wrong um, so this is the intro here then you drop into this Maybe without the shakers at first. Maybe let's duplicate this here. And here we remove the shakers. Maybe even without the synths. Oh yeah, let's save this. So generate here a new name. Something random. Save this. Uh, put GMB in there so I know it's drum bass. So basically remove all the stuff here we just added just to have this one here not having everything all the time. So I'm bringing in here slowly the synths, right? And I have some uh, some synth lines here. It's not all the time, everything. And then here I'm bringing in the percussion sounds. Maybe I put out here some of the synths again. So you have some variety and some exchange, some back and forth. So it's not always the same thing, the same pattern. So I'm trying to get slowly f f more and more filling up the, the frequency spectrum, but slowly. Okay, so let's say it's time for the intro. 
And in the intro we have, of course, at the moment, only the drums. And I want to keep the drums in there. I just want to maybe filter it here with um, the EQ2. To have something in there for the DJ to mix. So we keep this in and then we drop this here in. All the way down. Oh, we have to do it here, right. So I keep this in the intro. And I probably want to start with uh, some some pads. Maybe you can reuse here the synthesizer. So we take E and E. Stretch the sound a bit. Mm, let's try an LFO. Offset this maybe by 90 degrees. Oh, I see. maybe then for the drop here where we increase the amount um, let's bring this all the way down and then we bring this all the way up here to make a slow increase <laughs> Also bring this up. Fifty percent. We want to have both oscillators in there, and we open up the filter here slightly to the end. <laughs> And at the end, we bring the volume down. Yeah, it's the best drop ever. <laughs>
output. Oh yeah, it's the output here. Make to make the, we need to make this steeper. Shakers. Let's bring the percussion sounds here in front. And this is the pads here. Pads. And we maybe need to add something for the Instead of using an appreciator, maybe I use here yeah, just some notes. kind of triplet pattern. Yeah, something like this. the modulation amount here slightly.
So we have to bring in a lot of sounds to make this actually interesting, yeah. Um, it's probably the, the most of the work, actually, to make the intro interesting. I'm reducing here basically the drive because I don't like how it brings out uh, uh, 100 to 200 hertz area. I want to have it clean. Yeah, the intro is a bit, you know, there needs to be something, something in there to keep it interesting. At the moment, it's, it's a bit too thin. Let's use a transient control here. Crossover. I just put here on elevate at the moment. Maybe some of these synths here are a bit too loud. Yeah, this one here. It's a bit too much.
think I want to also bring the volume down here. We have here probably a lot of loudness already. Oh, that's the wrong one. So we are already at minus six. Uh, don't do that much. There's literally no limiting here happening. Just a tad. Okay, so um, just for the sake of the tutorial, I want to cut it here. Um, as you can see, I just need to put here some more stuff in the intro to keep it more interesting, you know, some weird sounds, I don't know, something like this, then slowly gaining here up speed, gaining up frequencies, and then drop here into the bass, into this empty, nice little deep roller. Then here I'm just exchanging or alternating between uh, shakers and riots and you know, it's just work at this point here. You have to, this is basically the main idea here, this, this small little section here with the drums and the bass. This is basically the whole track, the rest is just edits and adding some percussion sounds um, and uh, yeah, fleshing out transitioning sounds and so on. Uh, but you can see just by doing this in this way, I'm doing it here. I'm using literally no compressors, no limiters, just a bit of hard clipping here. The drums are already pretty loud with my preset here. Uh, is there something on there? Yeah, there's a compressor on there. Um, and then side chaining everything, you get a lot of loudness just by doing this. And um, I've already had the intro. All you need to do basically is add your middle part um, and then from the middle part you basically go back into a drop, maybe change up the bass a bit, change here some bass patterns at the end of some sequences, right, instead of just this doing maybe something completely different here. 
I don't know, maybe bring in a different bass sound or multiple bass sounds. Or maybe use yeah, some kind of pitch bend. Pitch bend. Something like this. And then basically flash out the whole track. It's from this point or from from where I created here this small small part on it was it was just work. It's not that creative anymore. I mean you can be creative in terms of what kind of percussions you use, but it's not like that you get stuck on something. It's just work. That's that's my point. Okay. Thanks for watching. I upload here this drums uh preset on my patreon and maybe also the whole project here up to this point and maybe i do um, a full fleshed out track in the future from this and upload it then on bandcamp okay thanks for watching leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel see you in the next video bye